Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to tell you a story about a time when I was on the water. Uh, have any of you ever been tubing behind a boat? Stephen has. I've been tubing on the ocean and also on a lake. The ocean was a little bit more wavy and rocky. Actually, I did it at Camp Quano. Some of you have probably been there. And we were going really fast, doing circles. You know when they do a circle and then you go back and you go over all the waves? And then we just got flung in the air and it was a lot of fun. Don't know if I do it now, but it was a lot of fun. Luckily, I had one of these on. I had a life jacket on and as soon as you hit the water, you pop back up again. Boats also keep us safe when we're in deep water, but storms, can rock the boat and make people feel really unsafe. In today's Bible story, we'll discover that no matter what's happening around us, Jesus rescues us. Let's get started by singing a song. Today is going to be a lot of fun, but we're also going to talk about a time that was really scary for Jesus' friends. We're going to learn how, through God's power, Jesus rescues us. And that's our Bible point, same as last week. So every time you hear the words, Jesus rescues us, I want you to respond by putting your hands in the air and saying, yay, Jesus. All right, let's try that once. Jesus rescues us. Yay, Jesus. Okay, let's check in with our Bible memory buddy, Guac the Iguana. How much do you know about iguanas? We, were, we learned a little bit last week. Let's find out with another this or that challenge. You'll hear two fun characteristics about iguanas. It's up to you 
to decide which is true, this fact or that. Here we go. Here's the question. Do iguanas hold their breath in water or do they just totally avoid water? I want you to plug your nose for this if they hold their breath in the water. Or I want you to wag your finger back and forth like this if for that, if they totally avoid water. Okay, here's the answer. Iguanas hold their breath in water for up to 28 minutes. Whoa. That's so long. Steven, can you hold your breath for 28 minutes? About a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky if I can do 28 seconds. <laughs> All right, let's watch our Bible Memory Buddy video. Hey kids, what's up? I'm Guac and I'm an iguana. I'm green like guacamole. That's why my friends call me Guac. And I eat a lot of green food. I'm an herbivore. That means I like to eat leaves and other plants. Do you eat green food too? I hear it's totally good for you too. Mm -mm. Leaves, flowers, and fruit give me the energy I need to spend my day swimming and tree hopping. Sometimes when I'm high up in the treetops, I watch you humans out riding the waves in the ocean. Cowabunga, dude! Surf's up! Sometimes I see people totally wipe out. Whoa! I'm glad there are lifeguards around to rescue people if they need some help. Speaking of rescuing, the Bible tells about a time Jesus rescued his friends when the waves were crashing hardcore. Jesus and his friends were on a boat. Jesus was super sleepy, so he decided to take a nap. But then it got epically windy and stormy. Jesus' friends thought they were goners, but Jesus wasn't worried a bit. Jesus told the wind, be still, and the storm stopped. All was calm. Jesus rescued his friends that day, and he rescues us too. Jesus is powerful, and he's always there to help us even when we don't deserve it. In the Bible, book of Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. You don't have to be perfect, and you don't have to try and earn Jesus' love. Jesus' love is strong. He loves you just for being you and he made a way for you to be his friend forever. You got a friend in Jesus when you worry or totally wipe out. He's got the power to bring you peace. Ah, Jesus loves you and your friends too. Totally. Jesus rescues us. The Bible is made up of different kinds of writing. Our Bible memory verse comes from the letter section in the New Testament. It's Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Let's say the verse together. I'll say a line, you repeat it after me, and help me with the actions. He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. I love reading God's Word. I love reading the Bible. It helps me remember that through God's power, Jesus rescues us. Yay, Jesus! Jesus cares about us so much, we can always ask for his help. Good morning, everybody. You are not going to believe what happened in today's Bible story. Before I get started, in our lesson today, I am supposed to teach our lesson. Well, actually, if you were all here, I would have asked for a volunteer, but you're not here and I'm on my own. So the idea that they have for this lesson, because somebody somewhere thinks they're funny, is to pour a cup of water and I am to teach this lesson balancing it on my head. That sounds incredibly stressful, which our story is partly about. I move too much, so I'm not going to do that. But if you would like to at home ask your parents' permission, and balance a cup on your head while I tell this story, okay? All right. 
so in today, in today's story, we're going to hear about a time that Jesus and his disciples were very stressed and worried. Now, last week we were talking about baby Jesus. Today, he's all grown up with disciples. So we kind of missed a lot in the middle, but that's where we're going today. So in this story, the disciples were actually afraid that they were going to die. They were afraid for their lives. And then Jesus did something amazing. Now, I have a question for all of you to think about. Can you think of a time where you felt stressed or worried about something in your own life? I want you to think about that while we're telling this story. So let's see what happens in our story. I'm going to need your help this week. If you're not balancing a cup of water on your head, you can help me with these actions. So we're going to start. We're reading today from Mark chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. When evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd behind, and they took him along in a boat, just as he was. There were also other boats with him. All right, so I want you to pretend with me that you're going to row across the lake in your boat. Now, have you ever been in a boat in very deep water? What was that like? I want you to explain to somebody in the room, what do you think it would be like to be in a very small boat on a very big lake? Now, at first it was calm, but then something started to happen. So I want you to rock back and forth in your boat like the water is getting not so calm. And I'm going to read what happened in verse 37. A wild storm came up. Waves crashed over the boat. It was about to sink. So let me help you with this picture here. Oh no, a huge storm came over the lake. It was a scary time. A tiny boat on a big lake with a giant storm. Waves were crashing over the side of the boat. What do you think happens when a boat fills with water? Not good. The disciples were starting to panic. So let's find out what the disciples did. Jesus was in the back, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up. They said, teacher, don't you care if we drowned? Jesus is napping in the middle of a crazy storm. He wasn't afraid. He was sleeping. The disciples, on the other hand, were a worried mess. They were sure the boat would sink, and they would drown as the storm raged around them. Well, let's read what happened next. This is verse 39. He got up, he ordered the wind to stop, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. All Jesus had to say was silence, be still, and the wind and the rain stopped. Everyone, I want you to take the deepest breath you can and hold it. Now let it out slowly. Feel the calm take over your whole body. All right, now take another deep breath. Hold it and exhale very slowly. Now listen. Shh. Cup your ears and listen to the silence. The storm was completely still. We're going to read Mark chapter 4, verses 40 and 41. He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Don't you have any faith at all yet? They were terrified. They asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. The disciples were amazed at Jesus. Jesus rescues us. Yea, Jesus. Just like he rescued the disciples. They'd never seen or even imagined power like this before. The disciples started to wonder, who is this man? And ever since Jesus lived on earth, people have been asking that same question. He's done so many miraculous things. Jesus is amazing. He is our rescuer. Jesus rescues us. Yay, Jesus. Have you ever been afraid or in need of rescue? How did Jesus help you? I was thinking about this question And my story is also about a boat. When I was a kid, my family went on a cruise to the Bahamas, which sounded like it was going to be great. But one night when we were traveling, a huge storm came up, and apparently it was far worse than was typical and was pretty crazy. I was so seasick, it's not even funny. But I remember laying in my bunk, very sick, 
and we heard over the loudspeaker to take everything out of the closets and cupboards and place all of our possessions in the middle of the room. And a few minutes later, they came back on and said, and have your life jacket close by. This is not a drill. And I remember I was so sick, and we were supposed to start moving towards the deck <laughs> at this point. And my dad was kind of carrying me slash dragging me because I was really sick. And we were kind of preparing for the worst. Not kind of. We were totally preparing for the worst and trying not to freak out. And I remember my dad praying while he was kind of like dragging sick me along to head for the deck. The storm did end up stopping. We did not have to get in the lifeboat and nobody died, which was great. And I remember when my dad prayed, even though I was afraid, I had a peace that I hadn't had before because my dad reminded me that Jesus was with me and that Jesus rescues us. On our own, we don't have superpowers to help us face our fears when life gets scarier out of control, but God does. Since Jesus is God's son, he has all of God's power. That's how he calmed the wind and the waves. That's how he can calm our hearts and our lives too. Jesus loves everyone, and he knows bad and scary things can happen in our lives. He knows there will be times when we feel out of control and afraid. We've probably all felt scared at some point during COVID. But Jesus will never leave us. Just like he calmed the storm and rescued his friends through God's power, Jesus also rescues us. Yay, Jesus. Let's pray and thank Jesus that he will never leave us and that he rescues us. Jesus, thank you for the story. Thank you for this reminder today that you can stop a storm with words, that you are so big and so powerful and you rescue us and you love us. I pray, God, when we are having big feelings during COVID or other things in our lives, that you would help us to remember how powerful you are and that that will bring us peace. Thank you for each of my friends here. Please keep them healthy and safe and bring them back next week. In Jesus' name, amen. In our Bible story, Jesus' friends were terrified and, and <laughs> thought they might think. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. <laughs> In our Bible story, Jesus' friends were terrified and thought that they might sink into the lake, but Jesus didn't abandon his friends. He didn't let them down. He calmed the storm, and Jesus is there for you in, in every one of life's storms. Jesus loves you always. I'd like to read you something about our friend Jesus. As you listen, close your eyes and think about a stormy boat ride. Now imagine you're in the boat and it's rocking back and forth. Now reach out to take your friend Jesus' hand as he rescues you from the storm. Oh no! The boat is sinking. That's what Jesus' disciples thought. And they were right. As they crossed a lake with Jesus snoozing in the boat, a sudden storm sent lightning sizzling across the sky. Thunder crashed around them and a wild wind sent huge waves flooding over the sides of the ship. The disciples were powerless to save their lives until they woke Jesus. With one command, Jesus caused the storm to stop. Just stop. Clouds rolled away, the wind settled to a breeze, and waves calmly lapped at the sides of the boat. That's what the power of God can do to storms. Storms that threaten to sink soggy disciples and storms that blow into your life too. Like when someone's mad at you, or it's you who's upset, or when you do your best and still fail to make the team or pass the test, or when actual storms mess with you and the people you love. Jesus can and will calm your storms if you ask. After all, he's in the boat with you when storms come. That's how much he loves you. You may get wet, but you won't have to be afraid. God's power is bigger than any storm. Such a good reminder and a good thing for each one of us to hear. All right, thanks for watching today. We need to say goodbye to Guapia Iguana.
Do you guys see Guac crawling anywhere? Over here? Okay, let's say goodbye. Bye, Guac. Looking out, it's a pretty big world. Where do I go? How do I fit in? Gotta keep this one thing on my mind.